Tesla has been known to defy the odds. Tesla has defied all laws of probability. It's incredible the seemingly turnaround out of nowhere that, that they've pulled off. Despite uh, all of its issues around Elon's behavior, this company is fundamentally changing how people move around. But now it may face its biggest challenge yet as coronavirus crushes the global economy. In the U.S., GDP retracted at a rate of 4.8 percent in the first quarter of 2020. And the Federal Reserve warned the second quarter could be even uglier. We're going to see economic data for the second quarter that's worse than any data we've seen for the economy. More than 33 million people have filed for unemployment since March, which means that at least 33 million people will most likely not be buying a new car anytime soon. Anytime there's a constriction to consumer confidence, consumer spending power, automobiles are one of the first things to take a big hit. And the pandemic has shut down production for all U.S. automakers. Tesla CEO Elon Musk clearly feels the pressure. What the f Excuse me. Um, people, I, the outrage is an outrage. This frustration is boiling over. When you have that much asset concentration in one factory, it's producing 70% of your vehicles. This shutdown is really crippling. So how can the electric car maker get through this economic standstill? Here's a look at why some experts say Tesla may be better positioned than other U.S. automakers to survive. Tesla was founded in 2003, so it already survived the Great Recession. But it was different times for the then private company. In 2008, it was just starting to deliver its first car, the Roadster. The luxury market actually typically fares better than the mainstream uh, brands because people with discretionary spending money can continue to purchase a new vehicle. Meanwhile, the big three were getting a bailout. In the midst of a financial crisis and a recession, allowing the U.S. auto industry to collapse is not a responsible course of action. The bailout of the auto industry back in 08-09 was considered very necessary because it saved thousands upon thousands of jobs. So if you allow GM, Ford, Chrysler to go bankrupt and fail, it would have a ripple effect across the entire U.S. economy. Prior to the Great Recession, a lot of automakers kind of got into some hot water because they were overproducing. There were some automakers that were just selling cars just to sell cars, just to satisfy these production contracts. And of course, that's not really a great way to do business. So when the Great Recession came along, all of that essentially collapsed. Tesla, on the other hand, never really had that problem. The industry is in a much better position to deal with an economic downturn now than it was then, simply because it doesn't go in already being well over capacity and having a lot of inefficient production issues. And I think Tesla was probably never really at risk of those issues because they've been a relatively small volume maker. I think it's much easier for Tesla to quickly moderate and modulate its production capacity during a downturn. He's got the flexibility to add a tent, which means he's got the flexibility to remove a tent when necessary. But this downturn is unlike anything that has happened before. And the timeline for the recovery is still unclear. In terms of like some of the big events that people have compared it to, things like 9-11, there was an immediate recovery the month after 9-11 in October. We had the highest seasonally adjusted annual rate of the automotive industry ever. And then when we look at the recession, it took years to recover from that. It was such a slow recovery that this doesn't feel like it's the same either. Again, it's like people keep wanting to draw parallels, but I just haven't seen a good one in terms of like where this actually falls in the spectrum. What's been fascinating about this particular circumstance is that the car industry, as well as the economy in general, was doing very well. Uh, it's been doing well over the last few years, selling around 17 million new cars a year, which is a very high number. So the shift in momentum, unlike the previous economic downturn that you know happened relatively quick in most people's opinions, so that's a big difference from the last time around. And while a specific bailout for the auto industry is not part of the $2 trillion coronavirus relief package, nothing is off the table yet. There's already talk of doing a very specific automotive financial assistance program from the government. 12 years ago, we had the uh, cash for clunkers. There's talk of doing the same thing coming out of this. And I think the automakers might be very much dependent on that to keep them financially stable. We don't necessarily see it for Tesla. We don't think they're going to need it. But for the, for the Detroit 3, 
we see a high risk of another bailout. The worst month in decades in terms of auto sales in April. We think this weakness in new vehicle sales is gonna last for some time. So it's gonna get ugly. For an idea of whether Tesla is financially stable enough to get through this, let's look at its first quarter earnings. All of the major automakers had a rough first quarter, but Tesla was able to eke out a $16 million profit propelled by strong demand for its Model 3. This surprised some investors. It was a much better than expected quarter. Their automotive gross margins, most importantly, were very strong, about 25% for the quarter. So they're really improving the profitability of the auto business. A lot of that reflects the new factory in China, which started up late last year and is still in the ramp up phase, but that really helped their automotive margin for the quarter. Tesla said it delivered around 88,400 cars in Q1 including the first deliveries of its highly anticipated Model Y crossover SUV. Tesla didn't necessarily deliver as many vehicles as we perhaps thought that they could. This was going to be their big celebration quarter. They had just got online in China and Shanghai. They're just starting to produce the Model Y at a much earlier pace than anyone expected. It would have been a really great success story for them, if not for the global events that completely overshadowed everything that they had going on. In Q1, Tesla reported $8.1 billion in cash. Tesla has a balance sheet that on paper can survive six months of a shutdown. But in practice, Jim, if, we're, if, if, if we shut the economy down for that long, we all know the narrative is, is very dark at that point. If you look at the $8.1 billion of cash, um, if you go back 12 months, they had less than $3 billion of cash a year ago. So they've generated a significant amount of free cash flow over the last four or five quarters. They also did an equity offering in February. That's also helped their, their cash balance. Musk raised $2 billion in a stock offering before the epidemic in China expanded into a global pandemic. Many like to group them in with a tech company, but at the end of the day, they build and sell vehicles. And that is a very capital intensive industry. And unlike GM, Ford and Chrysler, which are actually trying to ramp down production, and close plants. Tesla is in the kind of process of building that up. So they have to spend a lot of money and they're doing it very quickly. The way they got their China plant up and running was remarkable how quickly they were able to do that. And I think they're looking to do the same thing over in Germany with their new Gigafactory. So the spending is a worry for Tesla. We think the, the most prudent thing they could do here would be to do another equity offering because it's not clear how long this downturn would last. This new factory in Germany is gonna be about twice as expensive to build as the new China factory. And they've got it to spending roughly 3 billion a year in capital expenditures over the next three years. So they're gonna be spending a lot more than they have in the past. Tesla's got a certain amount of capital, but they're not necessarily profitable. So they're burning capital and losing money even when everything's running normally. They're gonna burn through it that much quicker if their sales drop off. But you saw the numbers that we just got for Q1 sales from Tesla and they were very strong. So it's indicating that, again, they were able to be somewhat resilient. I would see Tesla having as much or more chance to get through this difficult time frame than any of their competitors or any of the domestic automakers. Tesla's stock has been a wild ride for investors. But some think it does put Tesla in a better position than other automakers and could be a lifeline. Their most valuable currency is the stock, so they can always do equity offering. They've found no shortage of willingness on the part of investors to fund the company. They're looked very highly upon when it comes to Wall Street, and I don't think anyone's really going to let them fail. Tesla trades at roughly 10 times the earnings multiples as a General Motors or a Ford or a Fiat Chrysler. Tesla's market cap exceeds those three automakers combined, which is fairly unbelievable considering that its annual vehicle sales are a fraction of those companies. But some are concerned that Elon Musk's tweets could get the company in trouble again. Last week, he tweeted that he thought Tesla's stock price was too high. Stock now down almost 7%. It was at around 750 when he tweeted that the uh, stock was too high. Now it's at around 725. If you're gonna come out and say, my stock that I own is too high, that's harm to the shareholders. And that specifically is what the SEC had issue with the first time around. When exactly. They we attribute a lot of Tesla's success in the stellar quarters that they've had over the last three quarters 
to Elon Musk being a lot more focused, spending a lot less time on social media, and he's he's really delivered. So the erratic behavior really concerns us. We don't think that tweet is the end of the story. There will be forthcoming regulatory and perhaps some legal action from shareholders. The biggest test for Tesla will be the second quarter, which is expected to be much worse. Tesla's main U.S. car plant in Fremont, California, had to suspend operations on March 24th due to public health orders. It was able to reopen limited operations, but when the plant can be up and running at full capacity is still unknown. Tesla survived actually longer than many when with keeping production going in the U.S. It's going on a state-by-state -state basis, so when they can actually reopen or when other automakers can reopen is still up in the air. And unlike the Detroit automakers, Tesla doesn't necessarily have to get approval from the United Auto Workers to go back to work. So they could probably restart possibly a little bit quicker than someone like the traditional Detroit automakers. The company also suspended production temporarily at its battery plant outside of Reno, Nevada, and at its facility in Buffalo, New York, where it makes components for its batteries and its charging stations, along with some solar products. Impacts of these shutdowns are expected to hit Tesla's balance sheet fully in the second quarter of 2020. The company has already implemented furloughs and pay cuts and ceased all but essential contractor and temp assignments. Tesla ran into hurdles when it tried to open its plant up before shelter-in-place restrictions were lifted. This is fascist. This is not democratic. This is not freedom. Give people back their goddamn freedom. Its new Shanghai factory only closed for about two weeks in February due to the pandemic. It looks like China might be through this challenge sooner than other parts of the planet, and Tesla will be positioned well to take advantage of that. Tesla sold over 10,000 vehicles in China in March, its highest ever monthly sales in the world's largest auto market. But the bulk of Tesla's revenue still comes from the U.S. Autodata, which crunches monthly auto sales, says the pace of auto sales in April at 8.6 million vehicles was the lowest monthly sales rate since the firm started calculating the data in 1980. If we look at the traditional automakers, General Motors and Ford, they're just trying to get through this period. Um, one thing that they are offering are generous incentives for consumers. People at this point are very hesitant to buy, but many of them are offering programs like 0% financing for 84 months, which is amazing. And Tesla is a bit different. I mean, they're never one to really offer incentives. Clearly their retail model is different from the in, in the direct selling. So that could kind of help them perhaps get through this a little bit better. Despite coronavirus-related business disruptions, Tesla said it was able to sell cars online and deliver them to customers with a contactless delivery option throughout the U.S. They are facing a lot of the same problems of a shortage of customers. People don't necessarily want to spend money for a car. Tesla vehicles, as everyone knows, are not exactly cheap vehicles. So that's going to be an, an issue for them as well. I mean, I think one thing they have going for them is that they have a really passionate consumer base. And a lot of those consumers, in terms of demographics, skew a bit wealthier. So I think that is going to help them. And when you look at the long-term game, which is what they're in for, is, you know, we are shifting towards electric vehicles. In 2019, Tesla represented roughly three out of every four EVs sold in the U.S. An influx of new EVs was expected to enter the domestic market to challenge Tesla this year. But now that could change. Electric vehicles are expected to be one of the most negatively impacted segments due to the COVID-19 crisis as automakers pair their investments. I think Tesla's competitors are going to pull back from their commitment to, uh, to developing electric vehicles. The pandemic will cause automotive research and development to decline by 17 percent this year and 12 percent in 2021. That decrease is expected to include new software development, which many consider Tesla to lead in as well. The coronavirus, I think, is going to delay, delay, delay automakers' plans. And this is coming at a time when automakers were investing billions upon billions of dollars for autonomous and all electric vehicles. Also, don't forget that EVs for every automaker, including Tesla, don't tend to be high profit drivers. And so when you've come out of a situation like this, if you're a, another automaker looking to try to recover as quickly as possible from this economic downturn, it's going to be very hard for you and your board of directors and your economic advisors to say, yeah, yeah, go ahead and keep investing in these expensive, low-profit EVs. No one's going to want to admit to that, but all of these executives are going to be re-evaluating uh, their EV activity. 
Meanwhile, Elon Musk said Tesla is ramping up investment in new technology. We, you know, came to the conclusion that that, that the right the right move is actually to continue to expand rapidly, continue to invest uh, in in the future in new technologies, even though it is risky. Tesla has been fascinating because they do a solid amount of their production in-house. They are dependent on supplier chains like every automaker, but I think they are less dependent. And I think that's another advantage. We think they're they're better positioned than the other automakers. The margins on the Model Y are gonna be a lot higher because the Model 3 and the Model Y share many of the same parts. So they're interchangeable. So that should really help them from a margin perspective. If you look at Tesla's product versus the other products, it, it stacks up very well compared to all the other electric vehicle models that are out there. Plus, Tesla has another advantage. There's really nothing other than the, of love. There's just love of the car. Brand loyalty is something that has really shifted generally down for most automakers over the past 20, 30 years. There used to be this sense that if you were once a Chevrolet or a Ford or a Chrysler buyer, you were always that buyer. And that was true for the previous generations. The current generations, generally speaking, have not been very loyal. Tesla's got this really strong brand loyalty and, and solid fan base. And the equity that's built into the name as a result is quite powerful. It's one of the many reasons why the stock valuation is so much higher than other automakers in spite of a lot of their bottom line financial and production numbers being much lower. So I think that's where there's a real difference. Tesla has that cult following and it's something that other automakers wish they had. And just because the vehicles are delayed or because they miss benchmarks, their loyal following isn't gonna fall apart. But I think that they'll be able to weather the storm. It's not gonna be, of course, easy. It's not gonna be easy for any business at this point, but it does seem that they have set themselves up and have found such a strong, passionate niche that they're gonna be there for them on the other side. I'm sure even if they got into trouble, it feels like there would almost be like a GoFundMe account for Tesla to get through the storm. Any other company, you just wouldn't see that type of fandom for, but this company is, is definitely different.